Hello everyone, welcome again. In this software testing tutorial, we are going to learn non-functional testing. Now understanding non-functional testing is really important in terms of interview or even if you're working in a project, you need to have a better understanding of what non-functional testing is, what are types of non-functional testing, and why do you need to do non-functional testing, right? So because when you understand all the concepts, then within your project, you will be able to easily understand what all functional uh, and non-functional testing is being done uh, when somebody asks you about uh, different terms of non-functional testing and what exactly that means, then you will be able to explain easily and understand easily the conversation and discussions, right? And if you are trying to get into the non-functional testing space, then that this tutorial will help you a lot to understand those concepts so that you can explain those in the interviews. Okay, so let's uh, start the non-functional testing. Prior to that, I'll cover briefly about the functional testing. So in the functional testing, in the previous tutorial, we have understood that functional testing is testing the functional aspects of the application or the software. So what are the functional aspects? So functional aspects are the requirements that you get from the customer. Okay, so I'll take an example of e-commerce website again. So e-commerce website registration functionality. Registration functionality is the feature or the requirement given by the customer to build that registration functionality. So when you are testing the registration functionality, you are trying to launch the registration form, provide the details and click on register link. That testing is the functional testing. Now, when we talk about the non-functional testing, non-functional testing tests the responsiveness and stability of the application, right? So when you are testing about uh, the, how the application uh, is responding or how stable the application is, then those aspects are the non-functional aspects of the application, right? So say, for example, this is the registration uh, page, say, for example, of an e-commerce website, and this is the link, register link, right? When I click on register link, then it will open the register form wherein I have all the details, so first name, last name, all the details, and then I have to click on register button. And once I click on register button, my user details, whatever details I have provided, I should be registered and should be redirected to the dashboard page, right? So this is something which is functional aspect. Now, the non-functional aspect of the same operation would be when I click on register button, or register link, how much time or what is the response time to open the registration form, right? So if I am looking for this particular response time, say for example, it is taking, you know, two seconds, uh, then if I'm verifying this particular aspect, the response time, when I click on register link to open the registra registration form, then this is known as non-functional testing. If I'm interested into the response time of a particular operation, then that is non-functional aspect of the testing. Similarly, once I click on register button here, after filling out all the details, how much response time it took to basically redirect me to the dashboard page. So that is the response time I'm verifying. So this type of testing that you do to verify the response to verify how stable the application is, that is non-functional testing, right? So I'll cover this non-functional testing in a lot more detail, but this is brief, um, you know, introduction, what exactly non-functional aspect is. There are many more non-functional aspect that you'll be verifying in the non-functional testing, right? So responsiveness or response time is one factor of it. So that is um, the brief. Now let me, um, so the first thing we check is the responsiveness. So I'll write responsiveness of the application. And then second is the stability, right? So when we say responsiveness, how the application is responding on a particular condition or the load. So for example, in the festive season, e-commerce website have lots and lots of load, right? So there will be a lot of people who will be buying the items from Amazon, from eBay. So during the festive season, there'll be uh, thousands and thousands of users, uh, concurrent users at one particular time to buy the item. Or say, for example, there is a sale 
declared or uh, there is a sale on a particular you know day then on that particular day there will be a huge amount of users or spike of users on the website and then in that particular condition how the application is responding so when you are verifying the responsiveness then that is the non-functional aspect and that is non-functional testing whether your application is stable in those heavy load condition if, if you are verifying the responsiveness and stability this is non-functional testing in the non-functional testing what are uh, some of the you know performance indicator basically so when you do non-functional testing you verify certain things so there are many performance indicator but i'll cover the the most common one so the first one is basically the response time right so you verify the response time so based on say for example 10000 users are uh, concurrent users are accessing uh, ebay website at one particular time how is the response time for the user that is trying to access at that particular peak time, right? So whether the website is loading within five seconds or it is taking, you know, one minute, okay? So if this is not acceptable, if this is, you know, taking a lot of time, there'll be a lot of users frustrated and they leave the site and they won't access it, right? So this is what basically the response time is all about. So when, uh, you know, during a peak load of time peak load what is the response time and normally what is the response time so if you are verifying the response time so that is one of the factor in non-functional testing or the performance indicator the second one is the processing time right so processing time so when we say processing time how much time it takes to process say for example a customer came to the website and they added the order they added items in the order and uh, submitted the order made the payment so after making the payment how much time it took to process that whole payment and send the response back to the customer so that is the process time or processing time um, so this is one of the second indicator that you mostly check into the non-functional testing or the performance testing uh, the third one is uh, the concurrent user volume right so concurrent user volume okay so concurrent user volume we have already touched base on it so say for example there is a sale going on there will be thousands and thousands of concurrent user trying to buy the on sale items on the e-commerce website so you verify the responsiveness and stability of the application during you know concurrent user volume or when there are lots and lots of user at one particular time so these are some of the performance indicator and in the non-functional testing or performance testing you basically verify how reliable your application is how robust it is so all these are some of the factors you consider in the non-functional testing now let me cover what are main type of non-functional testing or performance testing that we do so performance testing is one type of non-functional testing and within performance testing there are many subtypes right so uh, the main uh, subtypes will cover in this particular tutorial and then i'll also cover those subtypes with example in upcoming tutorial right so let me remove this and the first non-functional testing or um, you know the performance testing i want to cover is load testing right so load testing this is very common um, you would have heard so let me write all of those so load and then stress testing so these are the common types of non-functional testing or the performance testing that you will hear and you need to understand all these in detail right so that you can explain to the interview uh, the third one is soak testing so soak testing fourth one that we'll explain is volume testing and fifth one is spike testing okay now let's start with load testing so say for example you have the e-commerce website okay and in this particular application your customer has given you the non-functional requirement say i want this particular application to uh, work perfectly fine if up to 5000 concurrent users right so five up to 5000 concurrent users the response time 
for this particular website should be less than you know uh, five seconds okay so in this particular case what you do in load testing is basically you verify that when the 5000 concurrent users are accessing this particular application the response time that you are getting should be less than five seconds so when there are 5000 concurrent users accessing the particular website so uh, in the manual scenario what you can think of is say for example you 5000 people accessing ebay.com right or any application that you are trying to build uh, and when you are the 5000 user um, uh, and you, for you the response time should not be more than five seconds but in the actual scenario in the real testing it is not possible to have the 5000 concurrent physical user trying to hit the server it is only possible in the production so in the testing scenarios what is done is the usage of tool is there so with the tool uh, the 5000 concurrent threads are being you know created and this um, you know simulates the users 5000 users and the response time is checked whether it is less than five seconds right so this is what your load test is all about so testing the performance of the application on a particular load that is given by the user so if your application is performing or the response time is within the accepted limit as provided by the customer then your load testing is fine so this is what load testing is now when we talk about the stress test okay so now load test is verifying that the response time is within the expected limit uh, when there are 5000 so for example concurrent users which is the requirement from the customer in terms of stress testing what we do is we verify the uh, we stress the system or we increase the number of users and verify at which particular point of time the application will break okay so for example uh, the requirement is 5000 users and the response time should be less than five seconds now this is what you will verify in load test but in the stress test what you will do is you will increase the users to 6000 users and then say for example once you increase it to 6000 users the response time was say six seconds right then you will increase it to 7000 response was eight seconds so you will keep doing it until the application breaks okay so you you just keep making note of what is the response time and what is the point when the application crashes crashes okay so for example here you have now increased to you know 50000 users concurrent users trying to access the particular website and the response time is 1.5 minute okay so this is very high response time, but you keep increasing the load. Okay. So you keep increasing the user and say, for example, at five fifty two thousand users, um, you know, the website crash. So this is the point that is basically the crashing point. And this is what you do in the stress testing. So in the load testing, you verify as per the customer's requirement, the response time should be within the limit. But in the stress testing, you verify how much load a particular application is going to handle when you increase the load and up to what point the application is going to break all right so this is what you do in the stress test now coming back to the soap test right so in the soap test what you do is so as we have done in the load test in the soap test you run the load test up to in in the longer duration or up to extended period of time right so for example the requirement was 5000 users concurrent users response time should be less than five seconds okay now what you do is uh, soap test is basically you create 5000 concurrent users accessing that particular website and that test runs for a couple of hours or a couple of days based on requirement okay so at say for example uh, this test needs to run for five days okay so first day uh, and then second third fourth and fifth okay so you create the load here of 5000 users okay and then that load 
continues for five days and you test that uh, the different operations with that load for up to five days when you do that type of testing it is known as soak testing so basically you are uh, you know running the test for extended period of time on the peak load okay so that is what soak testing is all about then if we talk about the volume testing now volume testing is mostly it's it's relevant for the testing of the database of the application right so here we are more concerned load stress and soak we are concerned about the users concurrent users accessing the website or the portal but when we talk about the volume testing it is about the size of the database or when you uh, input a lot of data into the database or you fill the data um, completely or reduce the size of the database right uh, not not reducing the size basically say for example your database size is of you know 5 gb and um, for that 5 gb database you fill it up and then verify how the application behaves then that particular you know a type of testing or the non-functional testing is known as volume testing so this is important because say for example you have the e-commerce website and when you start getting lots and lots of order your database or the or database will fill right so once your database is full or near full how the application behaves or what is the point when the when the application will crash so that sort of testing is also important say for example the the space is not left the database is full then how the application will behave right so that is the volume testing now spike testing is another type of testing uh, non-functional testing what you do in the spike testing is uh, in the load testing we have the load of 5000 users so basically how we create the load test is so there is a ramp up uh, and then as soon as so in the ramp up phase the number of users or the threads are increased and up to 5000 users with the tool and then you know you have this 5000 users you do the test and then you ramp down right now in the spike test what happens is there are sudden spikes of users and then sudden uh, you know reduction of the users so what happens is suddenly there will be you know, like 5000 users and then there will be you know like no user or reduced to the half and then sudden increase to the user to the 10000 and then reduction to zero and again so there is a spike of users on the application and then reduction of the users from the application and then verify how the application is performing in that particular scenario so that is known as pi testing so these are some of the non-functional testing there are many more non-functional aspects and non-functional testing but in terms of interview these are the five key uh, you know non-functional testing that should be good enough for you to explain what exactly non-functional testing is and why non-functional testing is required in any application so non-functional testing is required to uh, you know verify the reliability how robust the application is right so as we have seen basically what will be the response time whether whether the application is available on the high load or high volume or if the database is full or near full so these are some of the scenarios that you can explain in your interview when somebody asks you about what is non-functional testing and what are types of non-functional testing that are commonly uh, used and you will hear very commonly in your projects okay so that's all for this tutorial hope it was helpful please do share and subscribe and thank you very much for watching